my friends, to finding calm in the chaos. I am Denise Sip, and this is my podcast. Hello, 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 everyone. It's Wednesday, and it is time for another episode of Finding Calm in the Chaos. I am Denise Sith, and today we're going to learn how to kiss it off. Let me just tell you something. I have really sat down and decided that there's something that I'm doing that I haven't done before. And that is that I know normally people say, oh, just shake it off, rub it off. Um, And I'm like, no, I'm not doing that. I'm going to kiss it off. Let me explain to you the difference. When life is going to throw us all sorts of stuff. And man, life has been throwing me, as you guys know, some amazing curveballs. And um, I don't really catch well to begin with. So, um... You know, if you can't really catch a ball, how are you supposed to catch life? (laughs) That's kind of how I feel. So, you know, there's so much stuff going on. And my personal issue is that I carry, we all carry history with us, but I'm just going to speak for myself right now. And you may or may not be able to relate to these things. If you do, that's amazing. Throw me a comment under where you've seen this. Tell me that you could relate to this episode. Just, you know, whatever whatever you will feel inspired to do. But I have found that I personally carry history with me. Um, That is a polite way um, and a kind way of saying that I carry a grudge. And I don't want to call it a grudge only because I feel like a grudge means you want to pursue the grudge or whoever did the grudge or whatever did the grudge, you know, that you want to pursue this grudge and get like some sort of revenge. And I really don't feel that way at all. I feel though that there's history. That's why I like that word better. That the history between you, other people, other circumstances. Okay. I feel like I need to always constantly play those. Stay with me to kind of give myself a protective layer. Because I do feel that when you forget about history, it tends to repeat itself. Sound familiar in the world today? Um, and I really honestly am a component how, how this carries through to your personal life. In that if you're not really taking heed of your history, it will repeat itself. And or people will repeat their history towards you if you shake it off or you rub it off, okay? If you keep that history with you and you manage to find a happy medium, which is what I'm trying to do between, you know, oh my God, I'm going to put every last breath of effort into me to just like tell that person off or to make their life miserable or they're never going to get the best of me. I want it to be more like, I want to take this history to remind myself that there were ways that I dealt with this history or this situation that wasn't really healthy. And that now I want to make sure that I'm aware that that history is still there, but I would like to respond to it in a more healthy and beneficial way to my body my emotional state, my spiritual state, my physical state, just generally overall, I want a better response to it for healthy reasons. Okay. And that healthy reasons expands everything, not just me being sick. Okay. And so one of these things, we'll use this as an example as always, because they're hair people, because they're hair. But the parentals have been here since August and What I have found is that they do things that they're always going to do. For them, it's everyday behavior, everyday situations, not a big deal. But those situations are history for me. The way they banter towards each other, the way they leave shit all over the counter, 
the way they just randomly put stuff wherever they want and there is no rhyme or reason or organization when I have OCD in my house. The way they'll respond to you, because both of them say they can't hear, but if you talk to them to where they can hear you, um, then why are you talking to them that way and why are you yelling at them? See, there's this history of these feelings that always come up to, you know, the surface from being younger, childhood. And I don't want to bring those up to the surface. Now, what I don't want to do is certainly shake them off. Because if you shake something off, it meant something stuck to you to begin with. Let's be honest. And I don't, I honestly feel that just the play on words, kiss it off versus, you know, rub it, shake it off. If you're shaking something off, it's stick. It's stuck to you. You're having trouble getting rid of it. It's on you. It's on you like white on rice. It's not going anywhere. And it is, you are carrying this around. You're carrying it. It's a monkey on your back. It's just constantly on you. It's anxious inside of you. It is, you know, depression setting in. It's just panic attacks. And that is not healthy. But what I want to do is that if I've changed that and accept that that history exists, but it no longer pertains to me in my current state of being, I am an adult now, that response should not be the same as when I was a child. And so I've decided that I will take that history, make sure that I, you know, record it, log it, put it in a book and store it away. You are aware that it's there to take heed You know, especially when you have somebody who is narcissistic or who likes to play on words and that kind of stuff, right? Um, You want to make, I want to make sure, not I mean, you might want to make sure too, but I want to make sure that I'm remembering what actually happened. I don't want to be like, yeah, that never happened. I'm going to accept everybody wholeheartedly and then just get repeatedly hammered over and over again and disappointed because life can be disappointing and that's part of life, right? You deal. And this is how I have found has been a very healthy way to deal with history. I'm going to kiss it off. I know that it exists. I know that it's unhealthy. I know that if I respond to it like I was a child, that is unhealthier for me, right? Now, my health is involved, not just their health. And if I just accept it, not the behavior in general, but accept accept the existence of it. I can hold on to that, give it a kiss, and toss it to the side. It's never touched me. I grab it. I have control of it. I'm not shaking it off because it didn't, like, you know, attach itself to me. And this has been very beneficial. Let me explain some of the little things. And just imagine just this being your house. And you have a certain way you do things. And, you know, I'm going to be 54 in a couple of weeks. There's no way that I can like be like, yeah, you know, I'm in my 20s. Just, you know, I can learn to change. And, you know, maybe, you know, mom's right. And maybe here's the deal. Like, they're never going to act like guests in my home because it's just not the people that they are. They, I truly believe that they feel the way they feel about being here. And it's just simply not the way I feel that they're here. And uh, it is what it is. So I'm going to accept that behavior, uh, that fact, I should say. Uh, I'm going to store it in history and just kind of keep a lookout for it. You know, keep the book on the shelf. I don't need to carry the book around me. You know, I don't need to spill something on the book. I don't need to read the book. I don't need a bookmark. I just know that it exists. And then I take these situations as they arise. And I just have to like... Remember, the history book is there. This is a situation. Kiss it goes back in the book. Right? Kiss it forgot. Kissing means to me that I am loving myself. I am honoring the feelings that I have. And I understand that they bring up bad feelings with me. But they can't be the feelings that take control of me. And I find that there are lots of people who are like this. And one of the things that I've noticed is that in your world, no matter what is happening, people live in their world and they got stuff going on, my friends. They've got stuff going on. It's just not you and your house. I might think that this is just devastating for me. 
my son turned eight, my dog's turning one, my parents are living in my house. We don't necessarily get along. We don't agree on anything. We, it, there's a lot of like you treat, they treat me like a child. I keep treating them uh, basically like I did when I was 16, except I'm an adult and it has to stop. It has to stop. There has to be a way to walk around the issue in the interim until they are out in their place and whatnot. But there are a lot of external factors that play in hand, you know, put myself in their shoes. Well, you know, here's part of the issue is that the reason that they're looking for a place is a reason that is quite consistent with everything in their life. And that is one of the things that I struggle with. Uh, we moved around a lot as I was a kid, not because we didn't have the money or whatnot, but because of a behavior situation. And that same behavior situation is what is causing them to look for another place. So nothing has changed. And I don't feel that it should be an inconvenience to me as an adult because they're going through this vicious cycle of life that has never stopped. Oh, it's just, it's crazy, right? That these so many things bring up stuff, but again, like things in life. So, um, obviously I talked about it. Um, I'm talking about it often and on social media now that we are assimilating into a plant-based, predominantly plant-based lifestyle. I am not going to be vegan because I believe vegans, um, don't necessarily eat plant-based in all honesty. They'll eat synthetic, uh, vegan foods. And we are not doing that. So we are eating a true plant-based diet and we are assimilating into it for health reasons and for energy reasons. And in the hopes that um, to treat ourselves in the future, we can incorporate, you know, meat back in, but in a normal balance and at a bare minimum to maintain the health that we've done with the plant-based diet. However, not everybody feels that way. And in all honesty, everybody has an opinion. And I get that because I'm already getting them now. I'm going to flat out, like I'm getting tons of messages from people. A majority of them are awesome because they've all been helping me um, in this plant-based like world, right? There's so much available, so many tips. Why navigate through so much information? If people have already done it, I'm totally open to any suggestions that people have or, or IG accounts and stuff like that. It's been great. I love it. But then there's always the few, you know, I had mentioned to a friend of mine, that uh, we were going to Whole Foods and picking up some <clears throat> plant-based stuff to make uh, my first plant-based dinner like from scratch. And um, why, why would you want to do that? And she kind of, she didn't bicker with me, but there was definite resistance in that it was the wrong thing to choose based on information that was dated uh, because I've been doing the research for the last t- two months and the new research out there is like, okay, Oh, you know, all these fad diets work temporarily. I know because I've been them all. I've been keto. I've been carnivore. I've been paleo. I've been whole foods. I've been whole 30, whole 60, whatever it's called. I don't know. I've done it all. And they only work short term. And they're really hard to keep up full time. But the plant base is the only thing that I haven't tried because I've been very resistant to the the, the mix up between plant based and vegan. So long story short. Uh, long story longer. It's me. Hello. Um, I w- knew I was getting resistance from her. And, you know, you can only spew so many facts and then they're going to feel the way they do. And it, I really had to step back in my own mind during the conversation and be like, what are you doing, Denise? This is her truth. This is what she believes it to be. You need to step back. You did your research. You made a decision for her. She made a decision that she thinks works for her. And that's what it's going for. I don't agree with it, but I'm not in her household. And she is going through some serious personal, you know, situation in her life. You know, she's had a lot of life come at her. And I love her too much as a friend to be like, you know, well, no, you're totally wrong. This is how I feel. And like start giving her like articles and shit. She doesn't want that. She wants a conversation from friend to friend, which is what we wound up making it. You know, we agree to disagree. She wishes me luck. And I am there for her as a friend to always be there for when she needs to cry or just bitch or text in the middle of the night because that's what friends do. We don't always have to agree on stuff. But you just don't. 
You have to kiss it off. You have to take all of these behaviors because that, that little building up inside of that fight, right? That is actually what was triggered from my childhood with my parents. And so it always will bring up those feelings for me of this defensive stance that I have to take. And it's super unhealthy, just super unhealthy. And so that's what I did. And I'm like, oh, and if she's listening, girl, yeah, I'm probably talking about you and you know it, but I love you. And we're going to go on this journey together and always be there for each other, period, because I love you. Um, that said, normally this is the time that I would take a break for a sponsor. But in all honesty, um, I dropped the ball. <laughs> I got classes tomorrow. I haven't even shopped yet for my classes. Um, I have to prep some food. Haven't done that yet either. I have stuff in the laundry. No, no clue what I'm going to wear tomorrow. Probably the same jeans I have on today with a new shirt. And it's picture day tomorrow. So I'm sure I'll pull something out of the closet for Peter. Ah, oh, Peter turned eight today. So I'm recording this the night before it airs on Wednesday. So we had a big cake. He wanted to go to sushi station and, you know, it's funny seeing him look through going, um, I'm going to take this one cause it's California roll. This one's cucumber roll. That's vegan. I'm like, okay, but you can choose a, a fish one when, when we're here. I mean, we're not going to be, it'll be okay. You know, we're not, like I said, we're not being stringent on it. We're not being strict on it right now. We're assimilating into it, but we want him to be able to enjoy himself. And we did. In all honesty, I could barely eat half of what I normally do. And Mr. Sith and I were just like, yeah, we're done. We're done. And then Peter hammered down the rest of his edamame and we were good to go. Um, but it was a great day. Buster had, uh, Buster's birthday is tomorrow, Thursday for you guys. And he will be one year as old, but we had his party at daycare today. Oh, so literally I've been running around and all of this stress and running around while you know, I'm recording again in my closet studio uh, while Mr. Sith and Peter are playing video games downstairs. And I'm like, I still got to go shopping. Um, I still got to prep food. I'm so tired. But you know what? It is what it is. You know, um, I have to be able to manage um, stress and manage just the anxiety that I'm going to get it done. It's one day out of the week. Like, get over it, Denise. It'll be fine. I just... I'm reminding myself more and more now that when I do have these feelings of stress and they are building up, the key is to not let them build up. I need to kiss it off, not let things bother me based on old experiences and just know that they exist. And it's okay to just grab those feelings that arise from the past. Just push them back. Just push them back. Hey, thank you. But no, thank you. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, that's all I really got today. Um, I'm going to do, I don't know if it's a random rant this Saturday. I got like 9,000 things in my random rant book to talk about. Um, but I'm going to do a random rant one Saturday and then the coffee talks the following Saturday. Because I do coffee talks every other Saturday right now. Oh, I thought that would be fun. Anyway, there we go. Now you guys know what I'm saying. As always, please kiss it off. When you feel the temper rising or the anxiety building or you're eating too much chocolate, that's okay. I'm going to take vegan chocolate. Yep. And, and there it goes again. I almost made a whole, <laughs> I almost made a whole episode without the alarm. I always forget. It's because I'm always recording the same time now. It is what it is. On that, I hope I left you with a laugh. Leave with kindness. Bye.